These are my 10 best tips for Airtable beginners for 2024. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Alex. And what we do here is we talk about automation, Airtable, automating Airtable, and so forth. Stick around till at least point number five, because point number five changed the game for me. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get stuck in. So here's how this is going to work. The first four tips are really philosophical. They just set the tone for how you should really think about things. Then the next few points, right up until point number eight, they are more practical things that will help you become a better Airtable Pro. And the first couple of points, they are really for advanced users and just know what they're doing so that they can take their game to another level. Let's get started. So tip number one is a little bit of a controversial one. One business, one database, at least to begin with. What I've seen people do a lot in my years using Airtable and building bases for clients is that oftentimes we tend to split different parts of the business into different databases. And then it's really hard to blend things back in. Usually that kind of behavior leads to very difficult, dire consequences further down the line. So as much as you can, try and think of your business your whole business as one database, especially if you're just starting out. For instance, if we take a look, this is a garage database. It's a database for a mechanic. Of course, none of this is real data, but as you can see, I'm keeping all of my operations in one database, in one single table, change oil, change brakes, change fluids, and so forth. I have my list of makes and models. I have my clients. I have their cars. I have my branches because let's say I have more than one branch for my business. I have my list of employees. I'm keeping all of my data in one database. This helps. The next tip is very important. And that tip is to start small. I understand that even bigger databases like the one that you just saw with the garage and the mechanic, they take time to be built. You don't have to build everything all at once. If you have 10 spreadsheets that you use to run your operations, take one of these spreadsheets and try and fit it into Airtable and understand how that spreadsheet would work within Airtable. Basically, don't bite off more than you can chew. As we're getting closer to the end of our philosophical tips, I think the next one really resonates with me. And that tip is to make mistakes. Nobody ever learned anything if they haven't done any mistakes, especially when it comes to Airtable design and structure and really operating it. You have to mess up in order to learn from your mistakes and next time or this time make the necessary adjustments. Sometimes the bigger mistakes you make, the more you gain from them. Don't be afraid to mess up, experiment, try things. It's the nature of this product. Okay, so tip number four, this is where we're at the end of our philosophical discussion. And I think this is the core of what Airtable stands for. And that is relationships. Try and think in terms of entities in your data. Just like we saw in our database, you see how I'm splitting out absolutely everything about my business into tables. My repair types are on all in one place. My makes and models are all in one place. I have my make, I have my model, I have my year range, and that is just one record. Then I even have repair costs by make and model because maybe changing oil might be more expensive for, uh, for this Yaris versus this Yaris. I think you get the gist here. Try and think in terms of relationships, entities, and having said that, point number five is going to help us exactly with that because thinking in terms of relationships and entities is probably the most important skill that you can have when building databases. Breaking down businesses into entities and relationships that's it that's that's all there is to it basically when you boil it down so yeah let's take a look at point number five which was a game changer at least for me okay so tip number five use chat gpt as your database architect in tip number four i was 
kind of telling you, you know, start thinking in terms of relationships and blah, blah, blah. That is really one of the hardest things for especially beginner users to do, to break down their business into relationships, single entities, and so forth. So using ChatGPT, like I'm going to demonstrate now, it's going to speed the process up like 10x. So I've created a quick little prompt that will kickstart the process of us developing an Airtable database. Here we go. The prompt looks something like this. I'm a mechanic. I own a garage when we fix cars for many clients. Can you help me build out the table structure? Please explain the existence of every table. Let's see what ChatGPT tells us. You see how now it is creating the tables for us. And it's also explaining to us why certain things exist. All I have to do is just build it out. Kind of like paint by number sort of style. Just take the table structure that it gives you and try it on. It will literally kickstart the development of your Airtable database better than any template that you'll find out there. Now, this was a game changer for us because we get so much work from so many different business verticals that sometimes you want to speed things up in terms of creating the initial database design for the client. So this was magical because I don't really have to think too much. I can just give ChatGPT the key points about the business and we have a database design and we can work on that and elaborate and it will save time in the long run because we don't have to actually build out anything. We can just practice really inside of AI and then just build things out for real when we reach a really nice spot. Okay, so now we're getting into more practical advice. First piece of advice that I'm gonna give you was one of the earliest pieces of advice that I've actually gotten from an ex Airtable engineer. And that advice is every single time that you wanna have a single select or a multi-select field in your database, ask yourself, is this a table? And chances are more often than not, you'll see that the answer is yes. The data that's gonna be living in that dropdown, it's not just a single select, it's actually better suited to be a table in my database. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have our repair types and this could have easily been a single select somewhere. But because I'm linking this now to my repairs plus makes and models right in my costs, there you go, where I'm matching the repair type with the type of model and I'm giving it a price because I have that as a link to another table that gives me the ability to perform cool stuff, math stuff with this data. For instance, let's say I want to count how many different link to repair types I've got to changing oil, for instance, or changing brakes. All I have to do is just create a new field called count makes and models field type count and just repairs. Yep. Just count that and immediately I have the amount of how many different makes and models I've got for that type of repair. So tip number seven, formulas are life. Formulas are super important, at least when you're getting to grips with the basics of Airtable and you want to up your game and keep your database clean and you want to perform more cool things with it. Formulas and expressions are the lifeblood of that, or at least the beginning of you becoming really an expert at what you do. So if I had to pick three formulas that I couldn't live without, I would say let's begin with my favorite one, which is concatenate. Concatenate basically puts text together and creates text. There's an infinite amount of things that you can do, but concatenate I use every day. All of my databases will definitely have at least 10 instances where I use concatenate. My next formula that I can't live without is if. Basically, it's a logical function where, as you can see here in the example, the recipe for this is actually quite simple. So I like to think about expressions and formulas in terms of like recipes. You, you have to have some specific ingredients to make them work. And if is one of the easiest and most powerful functions that you can have. So the recipe goes something like this. You have to have three ingredients. The first ingredient is an argument. In other words, sales or the field sales is more than 50. So let's say you made 50 bucks in terms of your sales. Always next ingredient is 
if that argument is true, then do something. In this case, we're printing the word win. And you see where this is going. The third and final component of an ish is if this argument is false. In other words, lose. Can't live without the if expression. So by the way, years ago, I've done a comprehensive like little tutorial on if alone. So I'd put that down in the description below so you can check that out. That was a long time ago. Finally, my third favorite formula that I use a lot in my day to day is daytime format. I use a lot of date based expressions in my workflows, but I would say that daytime format is one of my favorites because I can give it a date string and then I can make it look as a proper date. For example, if you take this particular string right here, and for example, if you put a date field inside of a concat, you're going to get a very wild little date because it will include the date and time in, I think it's called UTC format, where it's very, really, very long. It includes seconds and milliseconds and it's like weird. So daytime format solves this because you can put that same date field in here, specify the format, the way that you want it to look like month, month, slash, date, date, slash, year, 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 year. Is that four years? Anyway, close the parentheses and then you have a perfectly formatted date. Tip number eight. It's actually quite straightforward, but very few people seem to get it. And that is something that a lot of people don't seem to use all that much or not enough, which would really change the game for them. And that is to familiarize themselves with the use of views. So let's take a look at our example here. For instance, let's go into makes and models and we have this list of just makes and models of cars. And right now it's just all, all over the place, but I can create a view for myself where I can just see my Toyotas and all my Fords and everything. So right now I can see everything and I can just call this all makes models. Then I can make a duplicate copy of this, change my setup over here. Let's say I want to filter it by the make contains Toyota and that's just all Toyota. I can make a further duplicate of this and just call it all Ford. There you go for fiestas. Using views will make a vast amount of difference into how quickly you can get to the right data when you're in a pitch. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this list and tip number nine is really invaluable and that is to become a master of the manual first manual processes elbow grease so that then you can automate stuff if you don't put in the effort of setting up everything and playing out your database and making sure that the manual process works to a t it is really hard for anybody even an expert like myself to read between the lines and help you automate stuff around. I mean, it's not super difficult to be fair, but it makes a world of difference if you know your process. So you can do some cool stuff with automations right in here, right in Airtable itself. All you have to do is just jump into automations and explore some of the trigger possibilities that we've got, like when record matches conditions, when a form is submitted, when records are created and so forth. And of course, actions, the stuff that you can do when something triggers. My personal favorites are typically using these automations to trigger scenarios in Zapier and Make. The other favorite is creating little copy pastes within Airtable itself. So let's say I want to take this piece of data, I want to copy paste it immediately over here. That is fantastic in terms of like using automations within Airtable. You don't have to use Zapier for this kind of thing. It's so much easier to just use Airtable's automations. And probably the final favorite automation that I can think of is sending like a status update to a stakeholder. So when something happens, let's say the car is ready for a particular client, I can set up an automation to send them an email. So that is like the core of how you can use automations, but you have to become the master of your process first. 
All right, this is the final tip. And the final tip is if you are now comfortable with Airtable and how you've set up everything, you have a couple of automations going on, it's time for you to explore interfaces because interfaces that makes Airtable so, so, so much more appealing to wider audience, especially if you have colleagues in the office or other stakeholders who you want them to interact with Airtable as well just like you do but they're probably a little bit you know maybe they're just a little bit allergic to spreadsheets interfaces chef's kiss but you have to have your house in order in order for your interfaces or rather your interface building journey to be as smooth as possible so this is it that was our list hope you enjoyed this video please let me know down in the comments below if i've missed some very important points and maybe you want me to do another video on some of these points very specifically i'm all ears and happy to hear any feedback that you guys might have until the next one thanks cheers